Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today, back to working on these cane mills that I'm working on restoring. I've got it, two cane mills that we're gonna be doing. Both of them are the mule-powered, uh, the upright rollers in them. Uh, one of them is a Golden's number one, one of them is a Golden's number two. So same brand, just different size machines. And I've got the, the four small rollers uh, out of the machines right now. These have already been sandblasted and cleaned up. But uh, what I wanna do is I wanna clean up all the journals on this over on the metal lathe and get them nice, smooth, polished, and ready to have Babbitt bearings poured to them. So uh, that is kind of the game plan for today. Let's get in here, show you what we got to work with and get over on the lathe and get started on this. So just a little close up shot here of the rollers that we're going to be working with. And uh, these are designed to crush sugar cane or uh, sweet sorghum. The stalks of sweet sorghum or sugar cane go through these. They're crushed and it basically squeezes all the juice out of the plant. That juice is then boiled down and uh, that's how you got sugar. Uh, as for sugar cane in particular, that's the first steps of making sugar. Uh, we make a syrup out of it and then that can be further boiled down into the actual sugar. Uh, in the case of sorghum, sorghum has a sugar-like syrup that can be boiled out of it too. It's a little bit different flavor than the cane syrup, uh, but was very often used back in the uh, early days and even during World War II when sugar was being rationed, a lot of people that lived on farms would make their own syrup and use it as, their, as a sugar. Um, but their source of sugar for their for their their families. So here's the the task here. We're going to be putting these in the lathe. All of these have centers in here. The centers are full of gunk and grime and grease and junk and whatever. So I'm going to be cleaning those up first. We'll be taking these over to the lathe. We're just going to be turning enough off of these uh, journals to get them nice and smooth and polished up and ready for Babbitt again. The beautiful thing about Babbitt is is that. The size of the shaft isn't really important. We will pour the Babbitt to match the shafts. So uh, I'm really just looking to clean these things up. I want to take just enough metal off of them that we can get them all cleaned up and not have any big pits or anything like that in there. If I get over there and realize there's a big hole in something, I may go weld it up and then turn it back down. Uh, but I think on these rollers, we're going to be fine. We're not going to have to do that. So uh, let's get the drill over here and get these centers cleaned out. And we'll get over on the lathe and start turning them out. So what I've got here is just a center drill. Same thing that we would drill a center over on the lathe with. I've got a hand drill and we're just gonna clean these up. Like I said, they're just full of gunk and grime. So we're just gonna get them cleaned up and we're, uh, we can get a good true center on them. It's not gonna take a whole lot on these, I don't think. go. Those all look good. We got good centers in there. I'm going to flip these around. We'll do the other side. Got my first roller mounted over here on the lathe and we just got it chucked up on one side in the three jaw chuck and we got this end supported by a center and it looks good. I see just a little bit of run out on this end. Actually, the, the roller looks like it's running pretty darn true. So we'll true that end up and uh, get it turned down where we have a good journal for our Babbitt bearings. All right, let's uh, get going. I'm gonna, some of those had a little bit of a ridge up on that end there. That one didn't look like it did. Come in here and touch off lightly. It's going to take about a 20 thousandths total off the diameter on this first pass. I don't want to take any more off of these than I just absolutely have to. So we're going to be uh, just taking some light passes here, getting them trued up and getting them polished. That's not quite cleaning it all the way up, but uh, it's getting it there. Taking one more pass through here. Hoping this will get it cleaned up. So I'm hoping this one will get it. Might even clean up that little uh, area right there where we had uh, some wear in it. Look at there. Beautiful. 
I just went ahead and took about 40 thou on that pass. I could tell from uh, looking at it, it was gonna take more than 20, but I think we got it here. And yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with that. Tell you what I'm gonna do is uh, take that out. We're gonna put a little chamfer on the end down there. Just to give it a nice finish. There we go. I'm gonna finish this out by just polishing a little bit with some emery cloth. This is gonna be a barren surface. So um, we'll just make sure it's nice and smooth. Very happy with those results. All right, we're gonna flip this around and I'll go ahead and get the other side of this one. We've got it flipped around. We got it chucked up now on this uh, shaft that's been turned down. Notice I've got some little brass shims in back here. Uh, those are just to kind of protect uh, the jaws. These hardened jaws will mar that surface and we've got a nice surface on there. I don't want to mess that up. So putting these little brass shims in there will uh, help protect that. And they're all the same thickness so it, it will keep turning true. Uh, also on this end, notice I turned my cutter a little bit. I just want to be able to reach all the way back in there without hitting uh, this since that is recessed a little bit. So uh, all should be good. Let's, uh, let's turn this one out and see if we can get it trued up as well. All right, we're gonna touch off down here. Again, I'm just gonna make about a 20 thousandths cut through there. And uh, see if she'll clean up. This one might do it in one pass. Got it. Yeah, it looks good. Notice that little area there where it turned a little bit different color. What that probably is, is the bearing probably stopped right up there and it got hot there. We got a little bit of work hardening in it. And it just, the metal's a little bit harder there because it probably got hot. No big deal, it turned right out. But that's the reason you sometimes see that. Again, we're gonna polish this out real good with some memory cloth, and we'll have roller number one done. All right, happy with that. Roller number two, ready to go. This one also has a little uh, groove in there, same place as that other one did. That looks like it's running pretty true. and touch off. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take about a 40 thousandths cut on it based on that last one. See what happens down here. Not gonna quite take it out. We'll look at it and decide whether we want to take another pass or not here at the end. Probably going to. Yeah, let's go ahead and everything's cleaned up except that little area down there, but I'm going to see if we can get that out. A bit lighter pass this time, but hopefully enough to take that groove out. Your 
maybe one little area there, but it's not gonna hurt anything. We're just gonna go with that and polish it out. And this one, we're gonna go ahead and chamfer the top there too. That looks a lot better. I will note that I noticed a while ago that this one was just cut on the bandsaw. It was never faced on the end. So the top isn't running true with the rest of the shaft, but not gonna matter. All right, guys, I think that's good. We'll flip it around to the other side. Again, we got it set up in here. We got the brass shims up here to protect our journal. Um, looks to be running true. Come in here and touch off down on the end. Let her go. Take a little bit more than that. Got that one. I'm gonna get in here and polish it. Roller number two finished up. The first two rollers that we did were out of that number two mill. These now I've got two out of the number one mill. These are smaller, as you can probably tell. And uh, I don't know, these have got. A little bit of pitting and stuff going on down here in the bottoms. Um, I think they'll clean up fine without having to weld them up, but we'll get in here and turn them out and see. Let's uh, see what we can do. It's like it's running true. And then touch off. So far, so good. Taking about 25, 30 thou here, which seems to be about what the other ones have been taking, about 30 thou, uh, unless we had a groove or something in there. So we'll see how this one turns out. see what we got here so there's a little bit of a void in there still <sighs> that may actually even be below where the bearings at but you know what I'm just gonna go ahead and turn a little bit more out of it we got plenty of metal there Let's just take about another 20 and see if it doesn't clean it up good see one little spot in there but I think it's just yeah there may be just a light little place in the metal but it's not worth turning out it's below the surface not gonna hurt anything it's not gonna eat a bearing up I think it's below where the bearings are anyway for the top of this one. This one has a little uh, ridge in there. But that has got it taken out. Yeah. All right. That side's good. We'll flip it around and do the other side. Same as before. We went ahead and uh, 
turn this uh, journal. No surprises. Turned out real nice. So uh, this is just the other side of that first one. Got one more roller to do. I'm gonna probably do that one off camera. You guys have seen the process here. Unless I run into a problem or something that's interesting, we'll just uh, knock it out. Catch you in a minute. Well, look at there, all brand new, nice polished journals ready to go. Looks like they're brand spanking new and these will make very nice bearing journals. Um, we'll be ready to roll. We'll note that the two rollers, of course, this is again off the number two mil. These are off the number one mil, but the rollers are one of them is a little bit larger diameter than the other. They go in the mill a certain way, and we'll do that when we uh, get over there. I'm not too worried about uh, trying to reface these surfaces. They were all running pretty darn true in the lathe, and uh, these need to be rough to crush that cane. They have little serrations in there, so we're just pretty much going to leave that casting alone, not going to fool with it at all. Of course, we got these cogs up here. There's a gear that fits down on top of those, and they catch in these little cogs, and that's what turns uh, all the, the rollers at the same, same speed. So uh, anyway, very happy with how these turned out, and these are, will be ready for having some bearings poured to them very soon. Well, there we go, guys. Got all of our journals here turned, ready for Babbitt bearings. So uh, that went very well. That actually went a lot easier than I thought it was. He's cleaned up really easy. I was worried on a couple of them. I might have to weld them up, but uh, again, no big deal at all. We didn't have to take too much metal off of these and these are gonna work great. So I do have the two big rollers still left to do on these mills. Uh, I know that at least one of those is gonna require a little bit of welding on one of the, or one or maybe two of the journals. We're gonna take a look at those. I'm do that in a separate video. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more involved than these, uh, but these are ready to go. So with that, guys, that is going to be a wrap. As always, thank you guys for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted. Uh, thumbs up, comments, greatly, greatly appreciated. Uh, leave those comments down below and hit that thumbs up button down there if you liked what you saw. Really helps with the analytics on YouTube. And uh, as always, a big, huge thank you to my supporters out there who support the site through Patreon, through PayPal, through other means. Again, we could not do everything we do if it wasn't for everybody's help out there uh, contributing and helping out. And with that, guys, we will catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.